Good morning and welcome to worship on this, well, it's a little dreary Sunday, but it is good to be here and to see all of you. That gives me great joy. And welcome to everyone who is online with us this morning. We have a couple of announcements. Um, next Sunday, we have Micah Graves here at 4 p.m. for at or at, it's not Advent any longer. <laughs> it is Epiphany. We are in the season of Epiphany or coming up to the season of Epiphany now. And we will have Micah Graves here to do Epiphany Vespers, Jazz Vespers. He is amazing. He is amazing. Ask anyone who was here for the Vesper service that he did back in November. Uh, September. September. September? Was that September? Oh my gosh. <laughs> It's now 2022, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> the days and months and years are blurring. That's, <laughs> it's been very busy. So it is going to be a wonderful, wonderful time with Micah. He's an incredible musician and an amazing person. So please join us here um, or on live stream. We will be live streaming the service as well on January 9th at 4 p.m. Um, <clears throat> I don't know who exactly is online at the moment. <laughs> is Ginny online? Does anybody see? Okay. I'm going to say not. Does anybody see Ginny online? Okay. So January 16th is the worship service to honor Ginny Jones on her retirement from this congregation and from Edge. We did change the date. It was going to be January 9th. But with many moving parts, January 16th is the day that we will be doing this. So stay tuned for more details that will come to you privately so Ginny doesn't get wind of this. Although if she watches this, she's going to know. Anyway, <clears throat> I think she's busy today. <laughs> we do have our last Advent study, Epiphany study that we've been doing uh, this Wednesday evening at 7 on Zoom. If you do not have the link, let myself or, or our wonderful admin Nancy know and we will get that to you. It has been a wonderful study. Uh, we've really enjoyed it. I've enjoyed the conversations that we've had doing this. So as we turn our hearts and minds to this new year, Thinking back over the last year with all its joys and sorrows and the things that we've learned, the things that we have accomplished through it all, let us give thanks to God and meditate while Brian, Brian plays our prayer.
rise if you are able and join me responsively in the call to worship. We come to this place. Each of us on our own path. The path is winding. And the path is not always clear. And the path changes. But we are here. God is walking us home. What a gift it is to not walk alone. Let us worship holy God. I imagine that, for the Magi, walking to Bethlehem was not easy. I imagine that following a star for navigation was definitely not easy. However, I imagine that the hardest part might have been not knowing where the road would lead. Friends, we are not always the best versions of ourselves when we are faced with uncertainty or changing plans. Facing the unknown pulls on every ounce of our anxiety and fear. It rings all of our stress alarms, and it can erode our patience, our calm, our sense of perspective. Fortunately for us, we worship a God who is gracious beyond imagination and meets us on every twist and turn of the road home. So let us pray together now, knowing that even in our worst moments, we are held by God. Let us pray. God of changed plans, the Magi heard in a dream that they were to take a new way home, a different path, an untraveled road. And to our amazement, they did just that. The Magi packed their bags and went home by another way. We wish that change could be easy for us, but more often than not, when whispers of change come, we tend to clench our fists and hold on tighter. Forgive us for resisting change that might be holy. Forgive us for ignoring that there is more than one road home. 
Forgive us for failing to hear your invitation. Guide our steps to unfamiliar places. Gratefully we praise. Amen. Beloved family of faith, no matter which rose we take in this one wild and very precious life, God walks with us. God never leaves our side. When the road changes and we find ourselves on a new path home, God is always there. So hear and believe this good news. No matter where we go, no matter what we do, we are claimed, loved, and held by God. Thanks be to a God for a love like that. peace of the risen Christ be with you all. And also with you. you are invited to turn and wave to everybody here with a sign of peace. And everybody turn and wave to everybody there at home. Susan, Grace, hello. Peace be with you. Peace. And take a moment to leave a comment in the comment section for our online services and communicate with those who are online, with those who are here. do this backwards. I should put it on before I turn it on so you don't hear all the uh, scuffling sounds. This one's out of batteries. Is that one out of batteries? Okay. Yeah, it's on. Oh, all right. I think we need a new battery for this one. I think I need a new battery right now. I'm running low on energy. That's not good. We light the Jesus candle because... Exactly right. Gideon said he is the light and love of the world, and that's why we remind ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. And we light our own candles because we are also to be light and love in the world, too. And yeah. I think this is the Addy candle. That's the Addy candle. Oh, dear. <laughs> the Addy candle <laughs> is out of batteries. Because she uses up a lot of energy, doesn't she? Yeah, she does. No, she doesn't. She's got lots and lots of energy. Shall we have a seat? Because, yeah, <laughs> Ryan's laughing. Addie's dad is laughing. <laughs> he knows it's true, huh? So, do you know the story that we're going to hear today in Scripture about the wise men, the magi? Mm -hmm. They saw a star from where they live far in the east, east of Jerusalem in Israel. And they saw that star and they thought, hmm, I think God is trying to tell us something. So they followed that star to see what God was doing. And they followed it first to Jerusalem. And they asked King Herod, well, is there the baby here? We saw the star, the new king. And Herod's like, oh, no, 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 no king here. I'm the king. So the baby, the new king, wasn't born in a palace. So they followed the star and some other folks there in Jerusalem said, well, we think maybe Bethlehem. So those wise men kept following that star. And then they found 
the baby Jesus in the manger in Bethlehem. And they were so happy. And yeah. Actually, I, I remember about that story now. You remember that story now? Yeah, yeah. We really only talk about this story once a year, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. Not that much. Maybe we should talk about it more often. Yeah, and there's also a movie that you should check out called The Star if you want to hear them more. Oh, there's a movie called The Star if you want to hear more about this. Okay. All right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you. I did not know about that one. Mm -hmm. But then, after they were so happy and they spent some time with Jesus and they gave him those presents, mm -hmm. God came to them in, dr in a dream through an angel and said, don't go back the way you came. Don't go back the way you came. Take a different way home. Hmm. Because I think King Herod was a little upset that there might be a rival to his power. So the angel came and told each of those wise men in a dream, Actually, don't go back the way you came. Take okay. a different way home. And I also think the non-equal power, Jesus is definitely the more power. Yes, Jesus actually has the more power, right? Yeah. By, um, yeah, but by not the usual mountain, way, right? By a lot of mountain. Yes, by a huge mountain's worth. Yes. Like, by a landslide. By a landslide. Jesus is much more powerful than Herod by a landslide, says Gideon. Yes. Life and death, mm -hmm. the earth, planets, everything that was ever created. Exactly, exactly. So Jesus was actually much more powerful than any Herod, huh? Yeah. So, I wonder how far they had to go to avoid King Herod. Do you think they had to go a really long, long way? Hmm. No, no but no? they gone away that gone just straight and then around the kingdom. Around, straight and then around the kingdom. So maybe it was a little bit longer. A little long, yeah, longer, definitely. Yeah, definitely longer, but maybe not a whole lot longer. No. No, okay, yeah. Yeah, but definitely they had to go wide around where Herod was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. Herod wouldn't find out. Yeah, if they mm -hmm. did go to Herod, Herod would have demanded them to, to mm. make sure Jesus was healed before he could take the newspaper. Right, see. yes, they had to keep Jesus safe, huh? I think, yeah, there we go. It's, okay, it's dying. Okay, finally, you're here. <laughs> hey, Grayson, we were talking about the wise men. Hey, Addie. And how they listened to God and took a different way home so that the life of baby Jesus was safe. Some, and Gideon said some folks are greedy and they wouldn't do that. They would just do what they needed to do to get home quickly. They wouldn't take the time and care to care for the baby Jesus like that and keep him safe. Yeah. Yeah, but Some people don't want to be inconvenienced. Yeah, they, they of, would, yeah. The baby of God, mm -hmm. and then they would have to go straight back there. That's still not smart. That's not smart, no. Not no. Smart. So, 
We are so thankful that the wise men listened to God and chose another way home, even though it wasn't convenient for them. Straight, yeah. But God thankfully told them the news they need to know. <gasps> That's right. God told them the news they needed to know. God does that. Yes, God tells us the news that we need to know. Excellent. Very good. How are you guys? Good? Yeah, it's good to see you. All right, let's have our prayer together. Give us good news. Help us to listen and do as you want us to. Just like the wise men. In Jesus' name, amen. Very good. Let us pray. Holy God, you speak to us in scripture and in prayers, in sunrises and sunsets, in friends and in strangers, in dreams and in songs. We are speaking all the time, and how often do we miss it? Still our minds so that we can listen with a depth that we have not heard before. Still our hearts so that we can receive with open arms what it is you are offering us today. We know you are speaking, so we are listening. Gratefully we pray, amen. Our first scripture reading today comes from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapters three, verses one through 12. Paul wrote this letter while he was still in prison in Rome, in house arrest. This is why I, Paul, am a prisoner of Christ for you Gentiles. You've heard, of course, about the responsibility to distribute God's grace, which God gave to me for you, right? God showed me his secret plan in a revelation, as I mentioned briefly before. When you read this, you'll understand my insight into the secret plan about Christ. Earlier generations didn't know this hidden plan that God has now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets through the Spirit. This plan is that the Gentiles would be co-heirs in parts of the same body and that they would share with the Jews in the promises of God in Christ Jesus through the gospel. I became a servant of the gospel because of the grace that God showed me through the exercise of his power. God gave me this grace to me the least of all God's people, to preach the good news about the immeasurable riches of Christ to the Gentiles. God sent me to reveal the secret plan that had been hidden since the beginning of time by God, who created everything. God's purpose is now to show the rulers and powers in the heavens the many different varieties of his wisdom through the church. This was consistent with the plan he had from the beginning of time that he accomplished through Christ Jesus our Lord. In Christ we have bold and confident access to God through faith in him. The Lord's word. I invite you to listen again to the word of God as found in Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 through 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the territory of Judea, during the rule of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem. They asked, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We've seen his star in the east and we've come to honor him. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled and everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. He gathered all the chief priests and the legal experts and asked them where the Christ was to be born. They said, in Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what the prophet wrote. You, Bethlehem, land of Judah, by no means are you the least among the rulers of Judah, because from you will come one who governs, who will shepherd my people Israel. 
Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and found out from them the time when the star had first appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search carefully for the child. When you found him, report to me so that I too may go and honor him. When they heard the king, they went. And look, the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother. Falling to their knees, they honored him. Then they opened their treasure chests and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Because they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they went back to their own country by another route. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for wise words that come to us from centuries ago. Help us to truly listen to what you say to us through so many ways. So Lord, this day speak to our speaking, speak to our listening, and speak to our soul's deep understanding. Amen. So first of all, I've got a slight bone to pick with Paul. I don't think it was a secret plan of all, at all. I don't think there was anything secret about anything that God does or God's purpose in the world. God told Abraham that he would be a blessing to all nations. Now to me, that's not such a secret thing that even Gentiles would be included in those blessings. So even though I agree with Paul on many, many things, not least, that we are to have a bold and confident access in faith through Christ. I don't think there's anything secret about anything that God does. So what do we really know about the wise men or those magi? Well, we know that they come from the east. They saw a star that rose in the sky. They wondered about it. They went. First going to Jerusalem, thinking they'd find the newborn king there at the palace, but no. They encountered Herod, and then they went on until they found Jesus in an out-of-the-way place that was definitely not a palace. They were overjoyed when the star stopped over where this child was. They did not question the legitimacy of Jesus, even though his surroundings did not conform to social standards of royalty. They had a collective dream and they didn't dismiss it. They listened and responded and they chose to go home by another way. They listened, they responded, they discerned, they listened to the prompting of that angel in the dream, the messenger of God. They trusted to go on a journey far from home to see what God was doing. They trusted God to lead them with the sign in the sky, and they trusted God and chose to go home by a different route. They trusted. The wise men chose to follow. They discerned and followed God in all the tangible signs of creation, that star. What's more tangible in creation than the stars? They discerned and followed God with the signs in creation and in their hearts and minds. God was in all, through all, and they paid attention. They were truly wise. The Magi are so attuned to to the divine that they avoid Herod's manipulation. And as Gideon said, they kept the baby Jesus safe. They chose a different way home, one that was probably longer, maybe harder, less known, and it made all the difference. I have some favorite poems and poets, but one is definitely in the top 10. It's one by Robert Frost. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. 
and sorry I could not travel both, but took the one less traveled. Took the one less traveled. A different route, a different way home. And that made all the difference. God often calls us to roads less traveled, maybe untraveled. God calls us to the unknown, a different path, a different route. God calls us to find different ways ahead. God calls us to be attentive to God in creation, to look for signs of God at work, or to listen to the warning. We are to discern God's will with signs and in ourselves, in our own being, in our hearts and minds. We are to discern God's will and to be so attuned to God that we live that will out, that desire every day with every choice that we make. How often do we do that? How often do we truly listen to that still small voice that says, eh, maybe not this way? How often do we rethink our plans or cancel them because we felt something else was needed? A different way, a different response. Are we, do we just plunge ahead and do things the way we've always done them, regardless of the signs that God gives or that still small voice? Do we just barrel through because, you know, we've always done it that way? Or because we don't trust God to be at work in us and through us? Human beings tend to stick to the known. It's comfortable. It's always more comfortable. And yet here we have a God who very deliberately makes people uncomfortable. But those wise men, they were attuned. They weren't Jewish. They weren't Christian. But they were wise and they listened to God. And God worked in and through them. We've been asking people to serve on session. You might have heard from Pat or myself or another member of the nominating committee. And yes, sometimes it can be, you know, an onerous task. I hope not. There's the usual tasks of overseeing the care of the building, making decisions, you know, planning for worship. But more importantly, as a session member, you are to be called on for your wisdom, your listening ability, the way you attune yourself to God's will. Discovery, where God is leading, is a huge part of leadership. Discovery, discernment, where God is already at work. To discover where we can assist in that work. Maybe choosing a different route, a different way. A large part of what Session and the leadership will be doing is discovering and discerning what path, what route God desires us as a church to take. A path perhaps unknown. A path perhaps that we make with God's help. And through all of the discovering, discerning, we learn how much we trust God to lead us. And that can look pretty precarious at times. It can be scary. And as Ron said in our call to confession, that can produce anxiety and shut down, you know, everything except fear and reaction. But we have the examples in scripture of those who trusted, took that calming breath, 
and listened and then responded. They moved through fear and discovered what God was doing. The wise men listened and responded. They chose a different way home, one that they hadn't been prepared to take, and yet they did. We learn from these examples all through scripture, and we live by this wisdom. We can't predict the future, right? I don't have a crystal ball, and I wouldn't trust it anyway. <laughs> but we can look for signs of God at work in people, in the community, here in this church. We don't know what the future holds, but we can trust that God is leading. And we can discern together what God desires. It can be scary. The future can look uncertain, but God is with us every step of the way. Just as the wise men did not journey alone, neither do we. The story reminds us also of the company that God gathers to witness to the good news and to worship foreigners, you know, those kind of outcast shepherd guys out there not smelling so great, strangers, unwed parents. These are the people who come to celebrate God in the flesh. Herod, representing that imperial power and violence, does not get an invitation. He's kept away, at least for a while. The story should inspire us, motivate us to set out on our journey as individuals and as a church, as a community. This story should inspire us to continue to create community by welcoming outsiders, people that sometimes are rejected, and allowing their wisdom to come into us. This faith story should ignite our imaginations, as our Advent study says, to create the world as it should be, as God desires it to be. God invites us to an unknown path, to create the world as God desires where everyone is welcomed home. And God is with us on this journey. Every one of us. Everyone. And will give us signs, tangible signs, and inner signs, that feeling that you get when you've made the right choice, just like the wise men. That choice that tells you you are aligned with God's purpose in the world even if the way is unknown or difficult. We are not alone on that path. And that path will lead us closer to God, our truest home. Amen. And let's stand and sing the insert him in the bulletin.
The Magi came bearing gifts because that is what we do when we love someone. We prepare, we celebrate, we drop off casseroles and flowers, we bring gifts. It had always been that way. So today, we are invited to do the same for God. We are invited to bring gifts as our sign of our love. And instead of gold, we'll give our tithes and offerings. Instead of frankincense, we'll give our talents and our energy. Instead of myrrh, we'll give our time. We give because we love. It has always been that way. Let us give our tithes and our offerings now. You can give your offerings in the plate over here by the door, or you can send them directly to the church, or you can go online at our website at www.covenantde.org. Let us give our tithes and our offerings now. Let us pray. God of new beginnings, we offer these gifts to you today because we love you. The world will tell us to keep our money to ourselves, to hold it tight, to tuck it away. But just as the Magi made a different choice, we make a different choice. Instead, we give what we have, trusting that when we live like we belong to one another, we will see a better world. So take these gifts and use them for your good. With hope we pray, amen. Since my battery is now kaput, <laughs> I will do the prayer here instead of over there. Christ invites us to this table who are ready to move beyond the limitations of the past. All who are eager to move into the new thing that God is doing in our midst, all who are willing to let go of the pain that's gone. This is the day of new beginnings, time to remember and move on, time to believe what love is bringing, laying to rest the pain that's gone. And so this is an open invitation to come and receive the bread that will sustain us as we embark on this new calendar year. All are invited to receive the sweetness of the cup as a sign of God's promise of abundant possibilities. All are invited to this meal for all are forgiven their past regrets and invited into God's grace-filled future. Praise to the living God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts in this new day. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, creator and renewer of all life. Time and again, you seek us out, breathing again the breath of life into the deflated places of our lives. And so we come to your table again to praise you and taste yet again what your steadfast love can do. In faith, we'll gather around the table to taste and share what love can do. This is a day of new beginnings. Our God is making all things new. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with those others considered unworthy. Through him, faith and hope were born again for so many. For by the life and death of Jesus, God's mighty spirit, now as then, can make for us a world of difference as faith and hope are born again. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you 
and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so as we remember these words and acts of Jesus, we offer our own lives, leaving behind what we do not need, seeking new paths full of risen life in you. As followers of Christ, we proclaim and live out this holy mystery. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Then let us, with the Spirit's daring, step from the past and leave behind our disappointment, guilt, and grieving, seeking new paths and sure to find. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we may be for the world the body of Christ, breaking open ourselves to your future. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Christ is alive and goes before us to show and share what love can do. This is a day of new beginnings. Our God is making all things new. We invite you to come forward after I do the blessing at the table. And Ron, yes, I will get my gloves on my mask on and distribute the elements to you. If you cannot come forward, if you don't feel comfortable, we will come to you with the elements.
let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this food that nourishes our souls as well as our bodies. We give you thanks for this new year with many possibilities. Help us to truly look for your signs among us and in us. Help us to live out the fulfillment of your promises here in this place, in all that we do. And we pray this with thankfulness in Jesus' name. Amen. And let's stand and sing our closing hymn, number 110. Before we depart today, let us recite our vision statement. We are a congregation loving God, connecting people, changing lives, and reflecting Christ to the world. As we go from this place, feeling the joy of the Magi, we also know that many are grieving this day, and our hearts are with them. We grieve with those who have lost loved ones, even as the new year welcomes new possibilities. We grieve with the people of Colorado, whose homes and lives were destroyed by wildfires, even as God offers up new possibilities and new paths forward. Our hearts are with all those who hurt this day, even as God opens up new possibilities for those who are hurting. God always offers up new possibilities for all people if we but trust in God to lead us. So go this day into a new year and new possibilities for each of you following the path that God beckons you on. Go into the new year with all of God's possibilities before us as a congregation, knowing that we do not travel alone. We travel as a community with each other and knowing that God is with us on this journey. In the name of the Creator, the Son, and the Spirit, go on the path that God has for you this day, this week, this month, this year. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>